And welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. Today's video is actually a part two. So the prior video, you can see the link below, and also there's an Amazon link below because that is um, um, our video is being sponsored by Amazon as well, the um, by our Amazon affiliate link. So below you will see part one in this of this video which is um, talking about the signs of root rot in houseplants. And now we are going to repot this guy to try to save him and to get rid of the root rot completely. Now the root rot has already been uh, stopped some. Uh, he did stop losing leaves and he did stop getting yellowing leaves, which are two signs of root rot once I simply pulled back on watering. So you can see the soil here is pretty dry. And a lot of times when people may think, oh no, the soil is way too dry. I have to do something about that. I need to water him really good because his leaves are drooping, but that's a sign of root rot. So once you water, it's basically adding fuel to the fire except you're adding water to the problem and the cycle continues. So I have watered him a little bit just to keep him alive, but I pulled back substantially on watering because when, this was a rescue when I got him. I mentioned in the prior video as well that he actually had mushrooms growing on him, which was a huge sign of root rot because those are fungal spores that turn into mushrooms. So good to have when you're trying to grow mushrooms, not good to have when you're trying to grow houseplants. Okay, now I am going to today, today take him out of his pot and we're going to see what's going on with his roots. Now his roots are going to be pretty dry, but you will see that there is some moisture going on here in the root zone. And it's not looking too bad. Now I don't want to be putting it into, let me put this back down here because we don't want to get the, this old soil. Keeping, we need to keep that away from the new soil which we're going to be using. So you can see this. However, there is still an odor coming from the soil. So, and you can see here, let me get that good soil out of the way here. You can see also here this yellowing, little yellow spots down there. That is mold spores. So that is fungal, fungal spores is what that is. And it's the yellow here, you see that. So that was definitely a sign of root rot in this plant. And that was actually on the top prior to. So it's, you can see it's still active because this part of the plant is wet because I had to do some, I had to give it some water to keep it alive. So killed off a lot of the, 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 the root rot, but not all of it. So we're gonna finish doing that now. So what we're gonna do right now is we are going to remove gently soil from the roots and you need to work it around a bit with your hands and you want to make sure that you're being gentle but at the same time we do want to get all this yicky root stuff this yicky rot stuff off of here uh, because it was a pretty bad case of root rot. And I can smell it. It smells like mushrooms, actually. So I'm going to keep working on this till I can work out the, get the soil out of here, because this is not good soil, as mentioned. It has the, the, the spores in it. And it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of, you need to be gentle. You don't want to, you know, kill the plant that you're trying to save here. Uh, so you keep having to kind of work, work it in, work your fingers in there. You can take something sharp, but be careful and continue 
to get those set soil out of there. Now, this will work. I have done this before, doing it, this, you know, here with this video. I'm going to be showing this guy later, probably in two or three months or so. See how he's doing. Um, but it doesn't always work, so it just depends. It depends on how far gone the plant is. But if you have a plant that you know, you did identify it as we rot, immediately stop watering it. That's your one the biggest thing you can do is just stop watering, pull back on watering water just enough to keep the plant alive. Because really the top soil here, I'm not smelling that fungus like I am, moldy mushroom smell as I am in the bottom part that was still moist. There any plant can get root rot. There are plants that are a little bit more susceptible to root rot. So these guys can. But any plant that's overwatered and kept in moist and moist, soggy soil, it's going to happen. I'm getting a lot of that off, you can see. So I want to do a little bit more. You have to kind of walk a fine line between going too crazy and then stressing the plant too much. Another thing you can do is if you feel like you've got it under more under control, you can repot, which I would suggest repot in about three or four months again in another soil just to make sure if there's any spores that got that are in there from the plant, they they you get rid of them. And keep in mind too, you start watering the plant correctly, taking the correct care of the plant, you are going to keep root rot at bay because it's not going to be able to flourish when you when you're taking proper care of the plant. Okay. I feel like that's good. Do a little shake to it. The good news is there isn't a bunch of black rotted roots. If you did this, you pull a plant out, it's just all mushy black root. You see this is a nice yellow or white root like that that's still firm. That's a good sign, but if you do put your plant down and all the roots are mushy mess and the crown, this is the crown, the crown area of the plant, if the base is squishy, it's, it's a goner. Most likely a goner. At that point, if it's a plant, I would suggest taking a cutting off the top of the plant and propagating it. I'll be doing some propagating videos coming up here too. Okay, so now going to rinse again. We're going to get this soil rinsed off. And at the same time, you can even, if some areas look a little suspicious, just prune off the root. But remember, the plant does need roots to, to grow. So don't go too crazy taking off all the roots, especially a bigger plant like this. Now, I am going to use hydrogen peroxide on the root zone right now. And I it's in a spray bottle, which is really handy. So get a spray bottle with a fine mist. You can also do a dip. You can do a, 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 you can do a, a soak, a dunk as well. You do the dunk. Do one part peroxide to one part water. This is pretty much straight peroxide, so I'm really going to, and this is what they use um, in professional greenhouses. This is what they use. They use hydrogen peroxide-based um, fungicides for root rot and other issues of rot. So really getting it in there, really soaking it. Really want to kill off all those spores. Um, this plant is looking like it has a really good chance to be revived. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that on there and not rinse it off to further inhibit growth. Okay, now I am going to repot. Now, this plant 
really important that you don't put this plant, now that I don't put this plant in too big of a pot, I put it in too big of a pot, then I have a lot of wet soil, then the plant says, oh, time for more root rot. We don't want that. So what we want to do is always, and I have another video on this too, you always want a two-thirds plant to one-third pot ratio. In the case of a plant that has had root rot, you can even go to three-quarter plant, one-quarter pot for a while until you're sure that the root rot is under control and gone. Okay? So, I'm take, so, so that's something to consider here. So I could theoretically put the plant in this clear pot even so that I would be able to take a look and see what's going on with the roots so that I could see, then I could see if there's any of that yellow starting to form. Um, another thing to do is to put it in a ceramic pot after something has had root rot. Ceramic, uh, ceramic, especially the terracotta that is unglazed, they're very porous, so they let out a lot of moisture all the time. You do have to water a little more frequently. However, they will keep the root zone drier than something like plastic. So I'm going, I'm, 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 I'm thinking that I'm going to go with the terracotta because of that. There is glazed ceramic, which is basically in the middle of, it holds more moisture than terracotta, but it holds less moisture than the plastic. Now this one's like, oh, what a pretty pot. This will look perfect, but you know what? I am, this is too big of a pot right now for this plant. So I'm gonna go with this terracotta one that was nicely decorated by my daughter a few years ago. <laughs> and I think that he is going to do really well. So, going to set him down. Now, talking about what to pot is. So you want a mix that drains really well but at the same time holds moisture too because you do want the plant to get enough moisture. I like to use ProMix BX and then with something that's had root rot going to be putting in extra pumice. This is pumice, not perlite. I prefer pumice. I actually have pumice on my website, healthyhouseplants.com. You can get it on there. It's a lava rock. It's hard as opposed to the perlite, which tends to be to to break apart easily. And this will give the plant nice air circulation to, to once again inhibit the growth of those fungal spores, okay? Then I'm also putting in some of my Green Gourmet houseplant food. This has a lot of really good things in it. One of the things it has in it is worm castings and worm castings will help plants fight off pests and diseases, including root rot. It also has mycorrhizae, which attaches to plant roots and in exchange for attaching to plant roots, the plant will get more nutrients and more fertilizer than it would on its own, more and more water than it would on its own. So that, and plants actually grow out in nature naturally because of mycorrhizae. I have another video on that as well. So there's mycorrhizae in the fertilizer, so it's gonna give the plant strong roots because we want to, root rot is all about the roots, right? It's all about what's happening in the root zone. And so you want the strongest roots possible that you can actually possibly get. So anything you can do to make the roots stronger. Uh, the, my fertilizer also has rock dust in it and, some, and, and alfalfa meal, which is a natural growth hormone. So we're gonna give it a really good head start, a really good start here to get back to a really healthy status. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this in I've already mixed in the pumice, plant's ready to go. I have in here, this is drywall tape, which I really like instead of screen. So you can, you can see here what it looks like and it's actually sticky so you can fold it together and make a nice screen. Because this pot has a nice big drainage hole in it, which is something that you definitely want. So I'm putting that in there. I'm gonna put some soil on the bottom. And then I'm going to set him in here. And one, my one consideration was if this plant, this pot was gonna be deep enough, but it looks like it is. So I don't wanna plant, another thing I don't wanna do, especially with the plant that's been root rotted, I don't wanna set the plant too deep in the pot. So I need to put a little bit more soil in there because I want the, this part 
of the plant mm -hmm. right before the roots start. I want that part to be above the soil when I plant. And then there's the roots right below that. I also want to leave about a quarter of an inch around the rim. So, of the, so the, I want the plant to be about a, between a quarter and an eighth of an inch down, but not any more than that because that can also cause root rot. Um, but when I plant that, but you do need that little bit of a lip up there so that when you water, the water doesn't flow off the top and not get to the plant. Okay, so here we go. Filling in nicely, patting down. You want to tamp down. It's also called tamping with soil. You want to do that. There's a little extra thing here. You want to do that because you don't want any air pockets in there. Yes, you want the soil to breathe, but we've got pumice in here, so the soil and it's in terracotta pot, so the soil is going to breathe. You don't want big air pockets because that would cause a, a root to die back, and then that would cause another set of problems for the plant. So there we go with that. Almost done here. He is going to be so much happier. Okay. Now, I don't think I named him before because he was in such peril, but I really feel like he is going to make it. So that's very exciting. He's got all everything he needs. I'm going to be putting him in bright light but not direct sunlight, but bright light, and also keeping him, in terms of watering, moist but not soggy, so we want him to go approach dryness. Um, the first, I'm gonna keep the first inch, at least the first inch of soil, I'm going probably inch to inch and a half of the first inch, inch and a half, I'm going to keep wet, let go dry before I water him again. If you're concerned about a plant that you've done this with, you're concerned it's not getting enough water, you can always mist the plant with water. It will absorb the water droplets through its stomata and that will also help it. So um, that's another thing to keep in mind when you're, especially when you're trying to dry a plant out um, for a root rot problem. Okay, so I've got that good. I am going to go ahead and water him. Well, so Henry, just named him Henry, watering Henry well, because that's his name now. So, yes, I am watering well this time because I just repotted and I don't want the plant to go in shock, into shock because I did expose the roots and all that. But that is good enough for the watering. Generally speaking, you want to wait till so water comes out the bottom of the pot, but I feel like this, that, that with this, because of the root rot problem, that we, we don't want to go too crazy, but we did moisten all the soil. The soil was also slightly pre-moistened too. The reason I do that is when you pot up, then the soil doesn't go way down once you water and you have to keep adding soil. So it has the right consistency. Okay, so good. Now, one last thing I want to do here is, I want to put the date, so today's date, putting that in here so I know when Henry, when I um, tried to revive Henry, and also you can make notes on the back of the, that too, if you, on the tag too, if you want, maybe what you did so you know, gee, wow, it worked, what did I do? So that always helps too. But you can already see he's looking a lot happier. Of course, we'll know more in the coming days and weeks. Um, Root rot does tend to be a lit, can be slow going until it gets really going and then it, it works quickly. So won't really know much, like I said, for two or three months. So I will check back in with Henry at that time. And I thank you for watching this video. Please leave comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video.